hey guys, uh, Quinn from All J Products. Uh, today we got kind of our cool Jeep here. Uh, we keep doing these videos showing you all the stuff we're building, but I wanted to show you something that has been around for a while. So this is our uh, Shop JK. This is a 2007 that we got as a uh, early production and we got it in September of uh, 2006. So this baby's been around a while and I just wanted to give you a little tour and uh, show you what's working and what's not working on our Jeep. So first of all, we've got a uh, worn power plant on the front. I know a lot of people aren't buying those as much these days because there's other winches, but uh, we've been using our power plant since uh, 2009. Uh, we've had that, we've, we've used the air compressor a lot. It works great. Um, obviously on the front, we have a Genrite aluminum front bumper. Uh, Tony gave us this bumper way back in the day. I think we probably put this on about uh, 2010. So this bumper has been going since 2010. So that's seven years of uh, you know abuse. Uh, it's a great bumper. Uh, what's nice about it is it has a metal tray that the winch bolts to. Uh, I also have that metal tray welded to the frame because I also uh, use these um, shackle hangers a lot and we also flat toe off of these shackle hangers. So to me, it was important to have all that you know gusseted together. So being that the winch plate is all welded, uh, these are plenty adequate to pull off of. Uh, we've got a little plug here for the Roadmaster tow wiring. We also have a couple of D-rings welded on the frame back here. I got a lot of questions. Guys are like, hey, what are those for? Well, those are for the safety chains when we pull it behind the motorhome. Okay, last thing here on the front, we also have a uh, safety thimble with a Viking winch line. Um, I, it's a product I totally believe in. This one is uh, six years old. We've had that one on there for six years. It still looks good and uh, still still doing its job. Uh, a lot of people ask me about these uh, safety thimbles and why we like them. So uh, let, me, let me show you a, a good reason why. Okay, so on these uh, safety thimbles, a lot of guys are asking me about this and uh, I thought I would uh, show you. So one of the things I like about the safety thimble you can hook up your shackle this way, but the other thing is they got an oval hole. The other nice thing about it is you can hook the shackle up this way. So a lot of people are like, well, what's the big deal in that? Well, if you've got a vehicle with a shackle bracket like this and, uh, you know, your shackle is going to be uh, hanging on the front bumper, there's no way you can put it this way unless you get multiple shackles out. So what's nice about this one is that you can uh, stick the shackle through there and you can put it on a bumper or, or whatever. So that's a, a, great, uh, a great feature of the safety thimble that a lot of people don't understand. Okay, so anyway, so we got the reinforcement, we got the power plant, everything else. Really great, uh, I love this setup. Uh, these lights right here, uh, you'll notice on our Jeep, there's no LEDs. Uh, we've got these uh, ARB Super Rallies, or I guess IPF Super Rallies. These lights are awesome. They, uh, I, would, I would take on most LED light bars with these lights. Uh, they put out a ton of light. You'll also notice we've got the IPF headlight conversion. Uh, the stock JK headlights leave a little bit to, to be desired. And we live in the mountains, so we use light a lot here. So the way I have all this done is we've got uh, this working. So when you turn on the high beams, it automatically triggers the super rally. So they work off the high beam. So it's really quick and easy to flip between high beam and non-high beam. So here we are on the side. These are the uh, Genrite aluminum fenders. Uh, these are uh, early, early uh, Genrite prototypes, I think, that they got us way back in the day. And uh, we've been running them. There's been no reason to take them off. They look great. They work great. Uh, they get a little scratched up. We just take a Scotch-Brite pad and we Scotch-Brite them off and uh, ready to go. And so these were, uh, these even predated when Genrite had all the little trims. So we, we kind of made some little aluminum angles to hold the fender liner way back. And uh, I keep thinking I'll get a set of those uh, Genrite deals to put in there, but we just never get around to it. So coming back a little bit, you'll also notice we're using the uh, Genrite steel sliders. These, uh, these sliders have been on here since 2010, I believe, either nine or 10. And if you look at the bottom of them, you can tell we've used the crud out of them. These things work great. Uh, they work as a little bit of a step. You can see where uh, they, they, they probably need a little bit of attention. Um, if you know us and you know our Jeeps, you know our Jeeps aren't trailer queens. They get used a lot. So these uh, sliders represent a Jeep that gets used a lot. And if you look at the bottoms of them, when we have it up on the lift, you'll see that they've been used. 
A couple of last minute things too on the front. We've got a, uh, a long uh, uh, extruded aluminum style power steering cooler for the uh, Ram Assist. And we've also got a, a decent size uh, trans cooler also because our uh, transmission doesn't go through the radiator. It just goes through this cooler right here. Uh, one of the other things that we get a lot of comments about is the, uh, the flames on this Jeep. These are all uh, pinstripe flames. These were done by uh, Mike Chartel. Uh, he's out of the high desert and uh, he, he does a lot of really cool pinstriping and flames. Uh, we had these done in uh, 2007. So when the Jeep was like uh, less than a year old, we had all these flames put on. But uh, I love Mike's work and uh, I like displaying it on the car. Uh, one other thing we thought we would show you is the uh, star fabricating uh, door. Um, they're probably really hard to see, but we've got these uh, the little door check system here which basically keeps the door from uh, closing on you when you're on a hill or whatever. You guys know on these Wrangler doors, they do a lot of flopping, but uh, it's a really great product. And that's uh, one of the little things we did to this Jeep just to make it a lot nicer. Okay, so wheels and tires. We've, we've run a lot of wheels and tires on this Jeep over the years since uh, 2006. I, I don't know, probably 10 sets of different tires. Uh, this is my second set of the Falcon uh, Wild Peak MTs. Uh, I absolutely love this tire. This tire has been great. Um, these are uh, 37, 1250, 17s. Uh, like I said, this is the second set of these. I also had a set of the pre-production ones. Uh, we've, we've run a lot of tires on this Jeep, but I love this tire the most. Uh, I'm gonna keep running this. Uh, I might try the AT3 Falcons, but for right now, this is my, uh, my favorite off-road tire. Um, we have these on a set of uh, Raceline Raptors, uh, 17 by nine. Um, the center caps obviously are missing. Um, that's because, well, as you can see by the wheel, she gets off-roaded a lot and center caps are gone. Uh, they've, we've replaced them a couple times. I finally got tired of putting new caps on it. So no center caps. That's, you know, doesn't show that they're race lines, but they're great wheels. Uh, they, they look really good on the Jeep. All right, so here we are on the inside. Uh, not much has changed here over the years. Uh, the inside of our, our JK has been pretty much untouched. So first of all, we've got a uh, rock hard roll cage. Uh, this was one of the very first ones that they had way back in the day. And I, I don't even remember what year it was, but this was one of the very first ones they had for the JK. So this has been in here. Obviously it's been no problem. Uh, everything in here has worked great. Um, we haven't rolled the Jeep yet, but uh, Hopefully we never do, but if we do, I, I know we're protected. Uh, the other thing in here, we've got our, uh, you know, we've got our S-Pod. Um, I've had the S-Pod on here probably since 2008 or 2009, maybe. Um, I am getting ready to swap out this control unit here. I, I've got a brand new eight switch S-Pod. I've, I've added a couple more things than the six, so we need to upgrade. Uh, other than that, it's been uh, uh, trouble free all these years. Uh, I have a, Yesu ham radio here. We have the new Magellan TRX uh, GPS system in here, which works great. Uh, we got a Cobra CB in here, which we hardly ever use because we mostly use the uh, the ham radio. And then uh, other notables, I guess. Uh, we've got a uh, Tuffy center console. This is the one that uh, the console that goes inside the plastic console, and you can kind of see that the uh, cushion's probably seen better days and probably needs to get replaced one of these days, but. Uh, this guy's been great. It keeps our stuff secure and uh, otherwise we're pretty well stocked inside here. Okay, so in the back, uh, what we have here is we have, uh, you'll notice we have a uh, Genrite aluminum rear bumper. Uh, that's also been on here since I think 2010. Um, being aluminum, I uh, wasn't sure it would hold up and uh, last year sometime we did, uh, we did manage to put a crack in it. Uh, we backed into a rock or something, put a crack, so I shipped it back to Genrite and they welded us up. But uh, one of the things you're going to notice uh, real quick is uh, that's not a Genrite tire carrier. We like these AEV tire carriers. Uh, they work really great. You just open the back. Uh, it swings with the door. You don't need extra latches or anything. Uh, you can see we also have the uh, AEV fuel caddy on here. Um, so over here, uh, obviously the fuel caddy, but we also have the AEV high lift jack uh, mount for the high lift, which we obviously don't use very often, but uh, it is nice to have. Now, one thing you'll notice is we've got this Genrite bumper with this AEV tire carrier. Now, as far as I know, we're the only shop doing this uh, around, and we've we've uh, obviously used a bunch of different bumpers. We we love the AEV tire carrier, but other people asked for other bumpers. 
So as you see later, I'll show you a couple more variants, but this variant is a Genrite aluminum bumper with the AEV tire carrier. Okay, so this is a relatively new addition to the JK. Um, we've got, uh, just recently we installed these uh, ARB drawers. They're uh, Outback drawers. And um, these replaced a uh, steel box that I had in here for a lot of years. Uh, it worked okay, but it was starting to chatter and rattle and it was just driving me crazy. So I made the switch over to these ARB drawers. These suckers are super stout. You know, we've got our tools, our trail spares, we've got water, we've got recovery gear, uh, all kinds of stuff in here. These boxes are just awesome and uh, they're nice and secure. And what I like about them is they don't rattle. So when we're driving this thing down a washboard road, uh, we got no rattles from the back. So we've also got our old school ARB refrigerator uh, tied down to the top of the boxes. Uh, we use one of ARB's uh, uh, fridge tie down kits off some uh, uh, rings that we uh, bolted to the top of the box. Um, a couple other notables, obviously we got our fire extinguisher. We have a custom little mount we made up here for a, a shovel and an ax. This one happens to be a max ax and I've got the attachments down here in the box. Um, you know, nothing too crazy back here. Got a folding chair, uh, subwoofer left over from putting this box in. I haven't decided what to do with it yet, so it's just sitting here. Uh, ARB recovery gear sitting back here, ready to go at a moment's notice. We live in the snow, so we use recovery gear all the time. Uh, our gear stays in all the time, hence the, uh, the drawers. It's, it's really nice to, you know, have these drawers because, uh, you know, all your recovery gear, everything you need is just right here in the back and uh, rattle free and nice and secure. Okay, so here we are at the front of our uh, shop Jeep and uh, something pretty cool on the front. We get asked a lot about this product also. We've got the uh, Dominion Off-Road uh, hood strut kit. Um, I, 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 I still have this rod in here, but I hate it. It just drives me crazy. Uh, it's just a pain. This way the hood comes up. You don't have to worry about it in the wind if the wind's blowing. You guys have all seen the hoods fly back. Uh, so what we got under the hood here is we've got a 5.7 uh, uh, Hemi. It's an AEV conversion uh, with the, uh, you know, all the AEV, you know, wiring harness, AC lines, all that good stuff. Uh, this is probably the best thing we've ever done to this Jeep. It's just awesome. Uh, I just wish Jeep would build them with the 5.7 Hemi in them because this thing is just awesome. And uh, of course, about you know a week after we finished this one, they came out with the 6.4 kit. But uh, at 380 horsepower, this thing has got more than enough power to have a lot of fun with. So we got the AEV aluminum radiator. We've got our S-Pod. Um, no Jeep's complete without an S-Pod. You guys have seen plenty of S-Pods. Mine's a little dusty. I, I didn't wash this Jeep or anything. We just kind of dusted it off this morning. But we've got our S-Pod, which has been in use for a long time. Uh, we've also got a, uh, a medium duty ARB compressor sitting in here on a Dominion bracket uh, with a little air manifold here I put together. And uh, basically that uh, runs the uh, train horn that's underneath, which I'll show you later on. Uh, that was a request from Heather. She wanted to be able to, uh, you know, have the train horn. And then also I have a, a, a part in a box that I haven't installed yet. I've got one of the new off-road evolution uh, air powered sway bar disconnects. I'm gonna plumb that into this thing here shortly as well. I just haven't had a chance to get that one in there. Okay, so over here we just have the AEV intake that they have with the Canon filter when you do the Hemi conversion. Uh, I got our little Warren remote control unit. The new ones are, you know, brand new. The, the brand new ones stick on the winch, but this is the old school one that mounts in here. Uh, we've got a Odyssey 34R reverse terminal battery that we adapted in here. Uh, we've got uh, all J winch fuse kit, of course, for the fuse. And then we also have a little cutoff switch for when we flat tow it, we can turn the computer off so we don't drain the battery. And uh, over the years, everything under the hood here has performed really great. And uh, I guess really our only bump and bruise under the hood is we, we managed to uh, crack our uh, Hemi engine cover. So I guess out of our entire Hemi conversion, the only problem we've had with it so far has been this uh, cracked engine cover, which, uh, I don't know, we'll either replace it or we'll we'll uh, fix it up one of these days. Going along with the not a trailer queen uh, segment of our video here, uh, this is uh, typical trail damage. You know, the poor Jeep's been beat on over the years. It's run us a lot of trails. It's taken us a lot of really cool places. Uh, I don't know, six, eight years ago, we had a, uh, a snow run where we slid into a bank. And so, you know, we did this damage to it. And uh, 
we keep thinking about having it fixed, but then we miss the Jeep for a while and uh, it just adds characters. Okay, so here we are doing a little shop Jeep tour. And uh, luckily we're a Jeep shop, not a detail shop, because uh, this thing is filthy. I guess I didn't realize how dirty it was, but anyways, uh, living the life of a shop Jeep, we basically we just plucked it in here really quick. It sits outside in the rain, it gets wheeled. Um, we just got back a little while ago from Colorado for two weeks. We're getting ready to go out to Death Valley. Uh, this Jeep gets used. It's not a show Jeep. It's a. It's not a trailer queen. We uh, we actually use this thing. So, anyways, up here in the front, uh, we got some great not notable products. Uh, the first thing is we've got the Curry heavy duty steering system. Um, that's been on the Jeep for, you know, I I can't even remember. It's probably been six eight years probably probably since it first came out we've had this on here uh the only trouble we've ever had is just the boots periodically get messed up so we've, we've had to replace some boots a uh, couple of joints over the years but uh great product um i can't say enough good things about the curry uh, also you'll notice right behind the steering we've got the uh, curry rock jock 44 uh, that was something we put in earlier this year uh, we ran the stock differential with a bend in it for probably four years, and uh, we ran it like that till the locker quit working. So basically, uh, when it came to our Jeep, when we needed to put a front end in it, we called Curry, we got one of these suckers on order. Um, these are great front ends. Uh, you'll notice there's no truss or anything like we normally do. It's not necessary with the Curry. They got heavy duty tubes, heavy duty brackets. It just doesn't need a truss. So. Curry Rock Jock 44, um, great product. Uh, got a Curry diff cover here to go with it. Uh, inside the differential, uh, since we were building this once and uh, that was gonna be it, we decided to uh, just go for it. So we put a ARB 35 spline, uh, 35 spline RCV axle shafts. Um, this is, you know, right off the trail, right out of daily driving. So the thing is filthy, I'm, I apologize for that, but uh, the one byproduct of the RCV is obviously you get a little bit of grease in this corner here from you know the, the grease coming out of the boots and stuff, but uh, it's a nice trade-off for me. Uh, we live in the mountains and uh, the mountains are really hard on U-joints because of all the snow and the ice. Uh, I love having the RCVs. I could grease them from outside. I don't have to take anything apart. I keep them maintained. So for me, the RCV is kind of a necessity. Uh, also, we've got a uh, forged uh, metal cloak track bar uh, kind of remnants of some parts that we put on years ago. We've, we've swapped a lot of parts on and off this Jeep over the years, but uh, that, that bar is great. Uh, we've also got a set of uh, reed knuckles, reed racing knuckles. I figured we're building the front end once. We might as well just build it and be done with it. So we've got the reed knuckles. We did gain some tie rod clearance. I think it's about an inch and a half. Uh, we got the PSC Ram. That's been on here, gosh, since probably 2009, 2010, I think, was when that got put on. Uh, great product. It helps us sing in the rocks with the 37s. Um, other uh, notables here in the front, I guess. Uh, we've got the uh, just the uh, Curry replacement links here, the anti-rock links for the stock sway bar, the star, uh, stock smart bar. Uh, that is actually the third smart bar that we've had in this Jeep uh, over the years. We've uh, broke two others. This is the third one. It actually broke not too long ago. We put another broken one together and got it working temporarily, but. Uh, so that smart bar is about to get a uh, off-road evolution, uh, one of their air power deals, which will get rid of all the problems. Um, under the Jeep, uh, we've got a rock hard skid, which was originally for the 3.8. Uh, we modified it for the Hemi conversion. So the, the plate itself is okay, except that we had to move the, uh, had to move the holes. So we did our own little trap door kind of a deal on there. And what was different for us, we had to make some custom mounts up at the front for the, uh, for the skid plate so casey uh our fabricator fabricated us some nice little brackets here modified the rock hard arms so we've got our uh you know rock hard skid plate for the 3.8 uh, modified for our hemi so from here we'll talk about a couple different things so this jeep basically has uh what's known as a, a four and a half inch aev dual sport uh, the pieces and parts of this lift kit are various iterations of different years worth of parts so it's not really what they currently sell uh, some of the parts on this Jeep are still prototyped from when it was first, uh, you know, first built way back in the day. But uh, so the springs that have been powder coated, those are the four and a half inch AEV. Those are about six years old. Uh, you will notice we've got these uh, really cool looking shocks. These are the uh, Old Man Emu BP-51s. Uh, these shocks are freaking awesome. 
Uh, this is probably the best set of shocks I've ever had on this Jeep. Uh, we've, we've, we've run a lot of shocks on this Jeep. We uh, used to call it the shock eater because we went through so many shocks. Um, these shocks are great. They've got a uh, dial down here at the bottom for compression and they've got one up here for rebound. So you just take a little spanner wrench and you can adjust those. Uh, it's really quick and easy and uh, gosh, I really love these shocks. They, they've been, this Jeep drives awesome right now. So also up here at the front, you'll notice we've got the uh, metal cloak uh, control arms with the Duraflex joints. Uh, those have been in here since uh, basically right after metal cloak introduced them, uh, probably a few months into their run. And uh, basically they've, uh, they've taken everything we've thrown at them. I know there's a lot of debates between, you know, the standard curries with the Johnny joints and the metal cloaks and the Terraflex and blah, blah, blah. We talk about control arms all day long, but I, I've had many control arms on this Jeep. These are doing great. Um, we did have to rebuild a couple of the Duraflex joints, but that doesn't surprise me as hard as this Jeep gets worked. Uh, but it's a great product. So that's what we've got, all eight control arms. Also at the front, we've got the uh, Black Magic Brakes 17-inch uh, uh, big brake kit uh, with dual piston caliper, big rotors. Uh, you know, with this much Jeep, you know, this sucker's uh, 6,000 pounds basically uh, without people and without gear. So we needed more brakes, so we've got the Black Magic brake kit. Thing works awesome. And then, of course, up here at the front, we've got a uh, JE Reel drive line, and um, we we've been using JE Reel drive shafts for. I think close to 21, 22 years. And this drive shaft has been in here since 2007. This is the original drive shaft I got from 2007. So this drive shaft's been through three sets of gears, two different axles, a lot of abuse, been through the 3.8, all the beating we did. It's been through the Hemi. Uh, it's a great product. So this sucker is uh, still going strong. Uh, mileage wise, we're about 74,000 miles, so it's probably got about 65,000 miles on it. So this drive shaft's still going. Uh, probably after winter's done, we'll probably pull them out and have them rebuilt. All right, so here we are in the back. Again, I apologize for the dirt. It's, uh, it gets used, what can I say? So anyways, uh, obviously uh, you can see right here, probably a little easier shot of the uh, Old Man Emu BP-51s. Uh, they got a couple of nice features. They got this really nice shield right here, which keeps the sand and the grip from being shot from the front tires. It keeps these shafts from getting uh, damaged. Uh, you can see the compression adjuster here, the rebound adjuster here, remote reservoir, uh, great shocks. Uh, they've been great on this Jeep. I absolutely love them. Uh, this bracket right here is uh, original back to the nth days uh, when uh, nth degree originally used our Jeep to help prototype their suspension. This bracket's still here. Um, We've made a few changes to it over the years. We've, we've had to move the track bar around a little in the different heights and different iterations. This is a uh, stock uh, track bar that AEV supplies with their lift kit. Uh, this has been replaced. We broke this once. Uh, we were out in uh, Bishop and uh, broke this sucker. Uh, so that was a fun ride home without the rear track bar, but we got her off the trail. Um, ARB diff cover, obviously they don't come in orange. Uh, you know, you got a theme going with all the orange on the Jeep. Um, this has been on the Jeep since the beginning, uh, probably 2000, gosh, I don't know, whenever they came out, probably eight or nine, I guess, when they first came out. This one's been uh, powder coated a few times, and uh, this rear end is still the stock e-locker, which is uh, kind of defies logic with the Hemi, but we're still running the stock e-locker, and we've got, uh, if you guys remember, Superior. Uh, we got Superior 32 spline uh, Evolution rear shafts that have been here all this time. Uh, we, I remember specifically we put those in in the winter of 2010 because we uh, broke the rear axle in the snow and uh, needed to fix it. So we got those superiors and of course they're gone now. Um, inside the diff, besides the stock locker, we, uh, we've run Yukon gears exclusively in this Jeep and uh, currently we're uh, riding on 488 Yukons. Uh, this Jeep's been geared when it was the V6. We had the 538s in it um, and then we well, actually, we had 488s in it when they first came out, I think in 07, when the first uh, Superior 488s came out, we were running that. Then we switched over to Yukon 538s. Then when we swapped in the Hemi, the uh, gear ratio, the 538 and Hemi just didn't get along very well. So I uh, gave a call to uh, Joe at Yukon and we got some uh, 488s again. So we had a lot of different gears in this Jeep, but uh, so we're sitting on Yukon 488s right now. It's perfect with the 37s and the Hemi, works really good. 
Uh, front and rear, obviously. Uh, I did all the gears in this Jeep. Uh, we do that here at the shop. A lot of people, I guess, don't realize that, but we do axles and gears. Uh, so these babies are mine. Um, we got our little train horn up here. Um, just kind of a nice thing. Heather wanted it so we could, uh, you know, when the tourists are in our, in our way going up the mountain, it's just something nice. Um, the mountain folk will appreciate that. Uh, they just don't use turnouts and uh, they see that Genrite bumper and they hear that horn and guys move every time. It's awesome. Uh, last thing really back here, I guess uh, we've got a really old product up here. This is a uh, Kilby uh, Enterprises EVAP relocation skid. I think that went on in 2008 uh, when Kilby was still around. It's a great product. I uh, wish it was, wish you could still get these guys, but uh, we relocated that. Obviously the air tank's in its place and you can see the horn again up there. And then the last thing is we got a custom Flowmaster exhaust that goes along with the AEV kit for the Hemis. Um, so that's that's pretty much the back of this Jeep. Oh, and we got a Curry a rear anti-rock on this too. Uh, freed up some real estate. Uh, the stock sway bar just wasn't playing nice anymore, so we uh, upgraded to a rear Curry anti-rock. It works great. Um, you know, that's been on there three or four years now, and uh, we've had zero, zero issues with that.